Ladies and gentlemen, the players are ready. Please, a big hand to welcome Russia's Nikolai Davidenko. Up against, from Switzerland, the defending champion, Roger Welcome back for the match of the day. Big entrance for both of these men. Nikolai Davidenko, of course, uh, former champion here. Roger Federer, the defending titleist, three time former winner here at the Qatar Exxon Mobil Open. Keeping Davidenko, uh, Davidenko being kept waiting. Okay, guys, happy new year. Okay, six balls, seven nines, time breaking all sets using the net machine of the Hawkeye three plus one and TV changeover. Okay, any questions? Heads or tails? Head. Heads for you. You serve? Okay, good match. Thank you. Toss completed, and of course, uh, one man making his way through at such a big uh, reception. Rafael Nadal, here's another. The great man himself, Roger Federer, seeded two. Defending champion, as we say, three time former winner here at the Qatar Exxon Mobil Open. Nikolai Levinenko, many feel, can give him some problems, particularly if Federer is not on the top of his game here this evening. Uh, it's, uh, 10 past nine at night, local time. We've had a couple of very long matches so far. Wins, though, for the two seeded players in action, Joe Wilfried Songa and Rafael Nadal, most recently. Here's a look at the bottom half. Andreas Seppel, we saw come through uh, on day one in our coverage. He plays Guillermo Garcia Lopez in the second round. And Grigor Zemlia playing the winner of this one in another second round match to come. Yeah, that's for Davidenko. Well, you never lose the ability to hit the ball well, and that's something that Davidenko does as yeah. well as anyone. But the area that he's really struggled in the last 12 months is his inconsistency. He makes too many unforced errors, but the fact that he's playing Federer, there's no pressure on him in, in that sense. But, of course, there is a little bit of pressure, the fact that he's defending a lot of points after reaching the final here last year. So ranked 41 currently, if he was to lose this match, well, he'd probably drop outside the top 60. And then all of a sudden it has a knock-on effect further down the line that he wouldn't get him into the, the Masters events when there's a 64 draw. It's surprising that when you think of the guy, he's been a top 10 player for ages, former world number three. And uh, yeah, in danger of that now. I suppose really the best period he had in his career 2009, I mean, winning the ATP World Tour Finals, uh, really, I feel there was a lot of, it was kind of considered the sexy pick kind of coming into the 2010 Australian Open, we think two years ago. People thought maybe that was his time, and I remember he was setting a break up on Federer, and they just folded. Yeah, because he beat Federer here, didn't yeah. he, along with Nadal, so And you back really to thought back. he could be someone, because yeah. obviously, you know, people have talked about that, he didn't want a major title. 
that that would be his time and it just he had the opportunity there yeah it just wasn't to be but since then of course he's had massive problems you know, injury problems and then sliding down the rankings now but he's still as you say a quality player federer well what do we need to so do all these commentaries so often watch him warming up and what to add really i, I suppose let, let's keep it current here barry i mean I, compare it it's a lot of similarities, I suppose, with last year. I mean, he built up a lot of, a great deal of momentum, terrific indoor season, even better this time around. Comes here into Doha, thinking he's going to do quite well. I mean, it went, went on to obviously reach the semi-finals of the Australian Open last summer, and then Novak Djokovic dismantled him. I mean, got through him. But what do you think? I mean, he'd rather have that 17-match streak. I mean, he takes a lot of that. I don't think the couple of exhibitions are a big deal, really, in it. I mean, he's still such a contender. Well, there's so many positives, really, for Federer's year last year. I thought he played terrific tennis. Uh, but now, he didn't really play at his very best the first three or four months. He perf didn't quite happen for him against Djokovic in the Australian Open, then also in Dubai, Indian Wells and Miami. But really, from the start of the clay, played great. I mean, that match against Djokovic, the French, and also the final against Rafa. But what happened to Federer last year was it's the concern is he lost a couple of really close matches yeah. and that's why i was so buoyed by the way he was able to come through that final against song at the o2 when he lost that second set having had a couple of match points and it was easy to think well here's another match that's going to go away from roger but not so he came back played well in the third and ended the year on a high and i felt during that third set that it could define his year coming up yeah absolutely head to head you just saw uh, previously we're having a look at Mohamed el janati who's in the chair for this one head to head is handy for federer 15 to 2 but two of those wins relatively in recent times talk about the 2009 atp world tour finals uh, semi-final there and also here this is the third year in a row they're meeting a repeat of last year's final but actually the third year in a row they're meeting yeah. Yeah, but funny they're meeting in the first round just as the draw would have it and in fact Abedenko is not as highly ranked as in previous years he has caused him some problems in recent years after Federer just sort of killing him in their head-to-head -head. yeah if you're a senior player and sort of looking down and thinking the players you don't don't want to play Davidenko would be one of those and probably the other would be Karlovic yeah Severin Luti the uh, Sw uh, Swiss Davis Cup captain regular traveling partner regularly in the Federer entourage there's uh, his wife Merka father Robert and uh, the net as well uh, the regular team Boy, they've seen some tennis over the years there is Lynette Rod Laver, Andre Agassi and Rafael Nadal as the only men in the open era Good team in attendance here. Really at home, I mean, he trains, uh, you know, in this part of the world quite a lot, really enjoys this stuff. And his results <laughs> illustrate that as well here at the Qatar X and Mobile Open. He's got a fabulous record. Really just seems to enjoy starting his year here. Yeah, he's always preferred to, to play in the Middle East as opposed to starting in Brisbane or what it used to be in Adelaide. He has played uh, so much recently. It's starting not to be plays uh, what would be next week. The Kuyong exhibition decides to play a match there, but yeah, this is a big part of his preparation. As Nikolai's brother and coach, he's back in his corner, and to Edward's left is his son, and then Nikolai's wife Irina. So certainly for Nikolai, it would be interesting to see if his brother is back in his corner on a regular basis because for the best part of, what, a year or so, it's just been Nikolai and his wife. She's been the coach, yep. counsellor. <laughs> Doing everything. Yeah. It, actually, um, Nikolai's nephew plays exactly like... Nikolai in terms of the technique obviously the quality is not as good uh, there he is carbon copy of Nikolai in terms of the shot production played a few matches in the, the tour both men well represented uh, family and friends big entourage is out for this it's a big feature match here
two long matches already here on day two. Wins for the top seeded players in action. Can Roger Federer join them or will? This man, former titleist here, has something to say about that. Third year in a row, these two meet here on the centre court at the Khalifa International Tennis Complex. One win apiece, uh, so to speak. I mean, Federer will handily dominates the head-to-head. -head. Davidenko has enjoyed success in the recent past against him. The Russian here to serve first. Just the start you might expect from Federer. Clean winner on the backhand side. Very inauspicious start from Davidenko. Immediately slipping down triple break point. to love yeah, there. just the start that the uh, second seed the defending champion First would have wanted <laughs> Federer is so at ease here loves playing here he's enjoyed so much success in the past by uh, the perfect start there, breaking the Davidenko serve to love. In addition to that success last year, uh, titles in 2005 and 2006 as well. 15 long. very early Third you know, such a terrific front runner as well and Tavidenko the fact he's lost to him 15 of their 17 previous meetings will know that but they just can't afford Federer to get up ahead of steam for you know. if you think of the doubles court it's actually how like the Bryan brothers play it's similar to that in another couple of great legends great players in the modern game 14 I share that similarity. Like to move through, don't hang about. I'm commenting in the previous match on the fact that Rafael Nadal likes to take time between points. So Federer, the very opposite. Supremely confident, and he's made it a wonderful two games to love. Two games to love.
15 love. Jason Good all that now joining myself, Guy McCree in the commentary box. Uh, You've done you proud me. in the early stages here. <laughs> Make my way up from courtside. We're already a break to the good. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> you know, it's been a fine start from Federer. And it's interesting as well, just pondering, I mean, Jason, just the fact that because he's got a tough draw here compared to the, some of the ones he could have got, it's focused him. That's the thing. He's, he's dialed in absolutely immediately. He's made a wonderful start, timing the ball beautifully. It also makes a big difference, doesn't it, when you're playing a proper event as opposed to an exhibition. You know, I mean, those were no more than practice sets, really, in uh, Abu Dhabi. So I expected him to you know, arrive here and to play a lot better. But you're right, he knows. You know, it's a bit like a Master Series 1000, isn't it? There's no weak matches, so you know you have to play your best pretty much from uh, first ball on. Again, love you there. Federer leads two games to On the board, Davidenko. Federer still with the break, though, early stages of this opening set. I think also, you know, given that the first two matches were quite long, you know, these guys will be eager to get out there on court. Uh, that always helps as well. You know, you don't want to hang around, so it gives you a certain sense of urgency uh, as well. But, Neither of these guys uh, tend to take too much time between points. And I think that means that w whatever happens, we get a nice flow to the match. And I think, you know, when you talk about Federer, Davidenko, Ferrer, Roddick, that's the speed, I think, because we were talking about this in the last match, weren't we? Yeah. That the game should be played, because it is all about watching the rallies, not the players towel down. Uh, and, you know... It's a spectator experience again. It's, it's something we keep referring to, all these various checklist points, which we're going to get you a job on the ATP, I think, to make them happen, because we discuss them every year and they don't happen, so maybe there's something there for you. Time. Davidenko on the board then. Federer is still with the break. It really is quite a picture, isn't it, Doha at night, all these lovely buildings. Uh, more every day, seems like. Waterfront there. Take your seats quickly, please. Players are ready. Thank you. Fifteen long. I like that surf, uh, nice variation, uh, not trying to hit the ball too hard, just a, a big kicker. Uh, never really used to use that as a first serve, but uh, started to do so uh, towards the latter stages of his career. For service. I think when it's a breezy like this, if you hit a slower serve, the ball's going to move more in the air, so it's uh, tougher for the returner. Fortunately, you know, I was making the comparison. I mean, with Federer, who he skips through games, loves being a front runner. It's actually like with Bryans and doubles as well. They do the same thing. It's just very enjoyable, very easy to watch. But got to have the platform to do that as well. And he's engineering that. 40, 50. And you become so good at using momentum uh, in your favour when that's the case. When you're a good front runner, and the Bryans, of course, are expert at that. Yeah. Shots 40 30. Okay, Federer serving now beautifully in these early stages. 
Federer needs three games to win. Yeah, I think one of the things you need to do when it's a bit breezy is uh, perhaps just think about what you're going to do with your first serve. Do you take a bit of pace off, still get a high percentage in? I think that's what Federer has done. He's made 10 of 11 first serves so far, so you know, that's outstanding. And uh, as you rightly suggest, that gives you a good platform to then be aggressive with the ground strokes. You know, Davidenko, we know, is one of the best returners in the business, but you know, if you're constantly returning first serve, doesn't matter how good you are, it's always going to be tough. A tough start this for Davidenko, 1-3. Fifteen love. Fifteen on. that shot that he's uh, brought into his game in the last couple of years in particular. Federer. 15, 30. I just keep thinking about when I see this shot every time, his uh, win at the French Open 2009. Big thing he brought into his game at that point to help him in the wait for that particular title. Third shot. Forty thirty. That's pretty big. Lebedenko no, stand this at Whistledoy, 195 Ks. And uh, wraps up another service. Federer is still with the break. 3-2. Lebedenko settling in then. Service holds on the board, but still breakdown having given away that early advantage to Federer. It's always tough, isn't it, when you get behind the eight ball very early on against one of the best players uh, ever to play the game. And I think that's been one of the main problems for Davidenko in the last 18 months to two years, uh, you know, since he won this tournament almost, because then he went on to have the problem in Dubai, didn't he, with his wrist uh, a couple yeah, of months later. Yeah, we were discussing later. actually just before you came on um, about it, that 2009 is, but... I remember 2010 Australian Open two years ago. A lot of people were fancying him maybe to end yeah. his Grand Slam weight there. He was setting a break up on Federer. And played really well, didn't he? But then just strangely just went away. One of the strangest matches I've yeah. ever seen because of how quickly he fell yeah. apart. Because he was playing some Out good Out of nowhere, ball. basically, almost. Yeah. You know. But since then, because he doesn't have a big serve, mm -hmm. he has found it a little more difficult uh, to work his way back up the rankings because there's just no cheap points there for him. He's also just played a lot of matches as well. That's the other thing. I think it's kind of taken its toll a bit. And then you get the injuries as well. His body's just suffering a little bit. It's over 700 matches now and singles alone. So, yeah, quite a total.
15 long. Thirty long. Forty long. Flawless uh, once again, love game. Federer leads for It's a typical Federer performance, that right now. What was that match you played against one of the Rockus brothers where you were on the commentary at the end of a day? It's gone very long, a lot longer than this, and it's almost like Federer seemed a bit perturbed to be out there so late and finished it off in 50 minutes. No, as I mentioned, you do get a certain sense of urgency. Mm. You don't want to finish late you know, and have to come back a little tired. There's a lot of stuff that these guys have to do post-match that we often forget. That's a great shot. I mean, you know, we've got to take into consideration that he's got to do his post-match interviews. He does those in two, three languages. Yeah. They always take a good hour. He's got to get back Love to the hotel. Team. He's got to eat. He's got to get a rub down from his trainer. He perhaps might need to do a little bit of a physical training as well, you know, the cool down after the match. So that all takes two, three, four hours. So, you know, these guys finish 10, 10, 30, 11, and, and suddenly you're talking about the wee small hours, and that affects your body clock then. It's just uh, ripping them out from every angle. Law 30. Feel a bit for Davidenko here at the moment. Again, just too good for the Russian. Love 40. Break points. Fifteen, Good enough. Second break of serve for the Swiss. It just looks so unreal. New Bosnian supporters, uh, well, they've seen it all before. Federer 5 2. Uh, a tough one, isn't it? We've talked about uh, Davidenko having problems uh, with his serve. Uh, and this evening, if you just look at the numbers, first serve percentage, you think, wow, he's serving great. Uh, he's made 16 of 19 first serves, 84%. But you've always got to look at how effective those serves are as well. Those two statistics always, in my mind, have to be side by side. He's only won 50% of the points on his first serve and 33% of the points on his second serve. And that's because he doesn't really generate a lot of pace with the first serve. 
And so I think, you know, when you're getting that many first serves in and it's not that effective, you've got to hit it a little harder. It doesn't matter if you're only getting 65% in, but uh, they've got to be more effective. 50% is not going to cut it. It doesn't matter who you're up against. And, uh, of course, he's struggling when he misses that first serve as well. But you've got to take some risks. It's no good just rolling that first serve in, and that's what he's been doing, relatively speaking, so far. Time. There's uh, that wish again. We saw that earlier on. Carry Malami's working on it, perhaps. Yeah, he's taking his time, though, isn't he? Because she was wanting that coffee uh, a good three or four hours ago, wasn't she? Thank you. Really for playing. Thank you. Just 20 minutes played then. A few people taking a few extra moments to take their seats. Federer serving for the set. If Jin Long. Yeah, the fact is when you're serving at 94% first serves when you're Roger Federer, it's very difficult for the returner to make any impression. Yeah, and we talked about the fact that Federer had perhaps had taken a bit of pace off his first serve, occasionally used the kicker, but only occasionally. You know, most of the time he's still serving pretty well, uh, and obviously the numbers back that up. Uh, yeah, he's only the variety four of placement so of that delivery is so good as well. It's not all about pace. Set points here for Federer. Really isn't hanging about. Game and first set out with that one. Federer actually missed the first serve there. Shocker. Yeah. Six minutes down the set and the, the crowd work expected over the years with his performances here but even in his career that's a wonderful set of tennis 6-2 to Federer in 22 minutes you're going to enjoy this Jason <laughs> some good numbers aren't they it's, uh, it's always a pleasure uh, when someone posts uh, stats uh, like Federer did in that opening set 90 percent of first serves found their mark, I and mean, that's absolutely outstanding. Uh, only dropped to four points in total when stepping up the line. Nice ratio of winners to unforced errors. Uh, didn't really have to come in that often uh, when he did. He only won one or three points, but didn't really ha affect the outcome of the, the set. Played the big points well, three break points uh, and broke on two occasions. So, you know, Davidenko needs to rethink the game plan. It's no good getting 84% of first serves in if they're totally ineffective. So he's got to hit that first serve a little harder. You know, no winners at all, and that's unusual because he likes to take the ball early and dominate opponents from the back of the court and way too many unforced errors, 10 in total. That's a poor ratio. So, you know, a vast improvement needed by the Russian. has been here before, of course, lost 15 of 17 to uh, Federer in their head-to-head. Second -head. position has been on the wrong end of sets like that. Don't mention that. 
<laughs> David Enke to start set number two. It's a, a tough one, isn't it, to watch when uh, the player you're working with and uh, a loved one is getting hammered like this. There was another thing, Guy, that I found very, very strange. You know, of course, he hurt his wrist, but not only did he then change rackets, which was uh, unusual. Very rarely do the top players do that at this late stage in their respective careers. But then he didn't travel with his brother. And it, his wife took on the coaching responsibilities and, uh, you know, with the best intents in the world. She doesn't come from a tennis background, so it's always going to be difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Passed well. Having his intentions clear, Kavarenka with the answer there that time. I mean, it's one of uh, 15, life's 30. rules, isn't it? Don't mix business with pleasure, as far as the wife's concerned. Certainly didn't work particularly well for Davidenko. And, of course, I'm uh, just reminded by Steph Trudell, uh, the, uh, the only instance when uh, that's not the case is when uh, your business is pleasure. I think Steph's talking from experience there, isn't it, as far as his wife's concerned. 15, That's the problem on the second serve there. Yeah. When you're struggling to win points, you get a little desperate, start going for a little more with the second serve, uh, and then start serving through doubles. Yeah, more break points. Wait, please, wait, please. That's uh, Robbie Koenig's hairnet. You are really laying into the whole team, aren't you here? <laughs> and they have no right of reply, <laughs> at least on it. <laughs> That's how I like it. <laughs> Again, yeah. Federer. First game, so, so disappointing for Davidenko. Federer doesn't need any gifts like that, the way he's playing. He gave him one. Barry, uh, your courtsider, what's your assessment of it so far? Well, obviously, that was a shocking game from Davidenko, but I think it's more than what Roger Federer has done to Davidenko. He's just broken his resolve. He's made life difficult for him, and he's just having no say in this match at the moment. Barry, one final question there. Uh, you're not suffering from indigestion, are you? It was a pretty quick first set there. <laughs> <laughs> What are you saying? I eat a lot, Jason? No, no, you just have to eat very quickly. That's all. I can do both. Eat a lot and <laughs> eat quickly. Oh. It just illustrates the confidence coursing through the veins. 15 love. He really doesn't mess around at all, does he? Just plucks that out of the air. Never no fuss. Thirty love. Thing is, even Davidenko, with all his experience, <laughs> he's going to be struggling here. See the guy down the other side of the net playing like this. Oh, you almost made that one as well. <laughs> Not quite a question zone. No, and I think Davidenko's quite strange in that you know, he's been such a consistent player. Federer was talking about it uh, before the match. You know, he's been ranked inside the top five for season upon season. But he loses his confidence quickly when he's not winning a lot of matches. He li he's like Nadal in that regard. He likes to win a lot. Uh, and he hasn't been able to do so recently 
who doesn't? <laughs> but someone like no, no, I, I get what you mean. Yeah. It doesn't need as many matches to feel good about his game, you know. and just accelerated. You know, the thing about Federer is obviously he hasn't lost so in terms of compared to most players, he hasn't lost that many matches over his career. But when he's had losses, you know, hard losses, I say, he recovers from them a lot better than most. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is just imperious. Yeah, well, he's got this ability, you know, to, and a lot of great sportsmen have it, uh, to block out the negative. Them and concentrate on the positive. So if he has a bad loss, he can just say, okay, that was one of those days. I know I'm better than that, generally speaking. I've got to believe in the results that I've had in the past. Uh, and that's the attitude I'm going to take into my next match. Whereas other players with a slightly different attitude tend to dwell on the negative and they get really down on themselves and they start to worry about uh, whether they're going to be able to play well or not, as opposed to believing that they will. And that's served Federer well throughout the course of his career. It's always good to have a nice positive attitude. And of course, it, it also helps if everyone keeps telling you the greatest player ever to play the game. <laughs> it's tough to lose confidence when that's the case, isn't it? You know, and in terms of creating a bit of momentum at the beginning of the season, he'll be clinging on to the fact that he finished last year so well, you know, and he'll be saying, look, I'm on this 17-match winning streak. Uh, he won't be mentioning Abu Dhabi and those exhibition matches that he lost. He'll be saying, look, we're only talking about proper tournaments here. Uh, I'm the form guy at the moment. Super serve. Yeah, it's an even better fall that he had a better indoor season than he did the previous time around. Fortilo. He came here, of course, one... Uh, Defending champion here won the cataracts and mobile open last time around, having enjoyed doing exactly what you said, presumably, you know, building on that wonderful end of year, culminating in that ATP World Tour Finals title. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, easier holds so far. Third game on the board in the match. Federer leads two games to one. Still Federer uh, well in charge, is setting a break clear. Well, the one thing that really does stand out is the Roger Federer forehand. We often talk about it, but the spin that he's able to put on the ball now and uh, speaking to Tim Henman who practiced with Roger just before the O2 last year and of course Tim retired what four years ago and he said that the difference is a lot bigger now compared to when Tim used to play him all those years back the amount of spin he puts on the ball so evolving certainly is Roger Federer yeah I mean that's the game isn't it Barry I mean every season the players improve and if you're wanting to live with the best players in the world you have to keep working on improving your game Federer's doing that Nadal's been a shining example of that through the years and, and of course Murray in taking on Lendl is hoping to do the same isn't he because yeah, the bar keeps raising doesn't it yeah uh, and uh, you know Federer they often debate Jason is it you know Federer is he a better player now than he was five years ago I happen to think he probably is the other guys are also great time
just looking at the position that Davidenko hit that last ground stroke in, it was well back behind the baseline. And, you know, the image I have in my mind of him playing his best tennis is camped on the baseline, taking the ball on the rise, taking time away from his opponents. Very quick player. And again, you need confidence to play like that, uh, to believe that you're not going to make errors when you're taking the ball on the rise because you've got less time to prepare. The timing has to be absolutely perfect. service game. Devinenko just hasn't threatened at all in the Federer delivery. Game. Yeah. Yeah. Second 3-1 now for the second seat. Federer leads three games to one. It's hard to see how Davidenko can, you know, find a way back into the match unless you know, Federer loses total concentration and you know, hands him a whole host of unforced errors. Because I just don't see any weapons out there at all that could hurt Federer at the moment. and deeper difficulty. It's been one of his uh, favourite shots throughout the course of his career. This is going to go as well. Indeed, long. Of stance. 15, 14. Mr. Federer has two chances. Talk about so much the defensive ability of Roger Federer. 
always talk about the attacking the ability to dictate play. But that was uh, an amazing defence. Yeah, some good tennis from Federer. And, and I think, you know, in this situation midway through the second set when he's winning so comfortably, he's nice and loose. So he's going to defend well, he's going to attack well. You know, there's not a lot you can do to really hurt him unless he loses concentration. Uh, but I think uh, as, as far as this particular match is concerned, he'd be delighted, A, with the speed with which he's going to win it. He's only been in court 39 minutes. That means he's not going to get finished too late. And B, you know, everyone was talking about how tough this match could be for him. Uh, a repeat of last year's final, of course. So I think he'd be delighted with the way that he's been able to so easily dispatch uh, of Davidenko. And uh, that'll give him a lot of confidence going into a second round when, even though they were just exhibition matches, you know, no one likes losing. Uh, so, you know, having lost to Djokovic and Nadal, nice to get back to winning ways here today. And of course, he'll tell you, well, that's the 18th match in a row that I've won at official events. And long may that uh, winning streak continue. Time. Jason's pointing out only on court now. 41 minutes, but uh, just a couple of games away. The next round, the defending champion. One Federer, second set. Oh! Oh! Love it. It's all about maintaining the concentration now. That's all. It's job done, really. the crowd. Postan. First serve percentage has dropped in this second set, but uh, that one finding its mark. 30-15. And when that happens, guys, it's a big time to go with the old favourite, isn't it? A little slider out wide. Uh, it's been his favourite serve? Yeah. I think most effective as well. I mean, you rightly suggest that uh, it's the variation and the disguise on the serve that's so effective. But he's gone to that particular spot so often throughout his career when he's really needed 40, a cheap point. Yeah, and it works well. Very rarely serves into the body. Picks his two targets right in the corners and tends to go for one of the two. Again, Federer. And the service game wraps up. Federer just a game away now. Federer leads five games to one. Yeah, Merkel will be delighted as well. She doesn't want to be sat out there for uh, two hours in the freezing cold, does she? <laughs> Let's get back to the Ritz Carlton quick. It's freezing out there, believe you and me. Mum will be delighted too. Dad's there as well, so family affair. Nice to see. It's a good way to start the year, isn't it? Get the whole family out here. That's what they tend to do. He really does enjoy it. He likes this his preparation for the start of the year. Well here. It's safe to say. Love it. It's been another disaster, though, hasn't it? As far as Davidenko is concerned. I mean, yeah, Federer's played well, but he's allowed him to dominate right from the off. And this, again, will hurt the confidence. Way too many unforced errors. Poor performance on serve. Yeah, tough to build it up before the Australian Open. Ranking keeps slipping. They'll start to play higher-ranked players earlier and earlier in all of the tournaments. Tough to make progress up the rankings. Again, look at the core position there for the Russian. You know, a good 10, 12 feet behind the baseline when we're so used to seeing him 
They're playing right up on it. And now having to defend most of the time, obviously he's not going to be at his most effective. It's a nightmare, really. He's missed that. It was a good get from Davidenko. 15, 30. We're playing another ball. This one, first match point for the defending champion here. Thank you. I'm ready for play. Thank you. Yeah, well, here a bit of belated resistance from the Russian. Advantage, Davidenko. Do you sense it's too little, too late, though, even if you can hold it? Yeah, it's so rare that he's been able to actually step inside the baseline and take the ball on after a decent serve. Juice. 
Quite know how. Asked him to get another game on the board. Federer with the match point there. Federer and Federer hangs on just for the moment. Whoa. Sometimes you need all the help you can get. Uh, mistiming that one badly, but nevertheless, works for him. But long road back. Federer perhaps a little bit perturbed there and not getting it done. Just moving uh, more slowly than normal over to his chair. Sure he thought when he got into that game, had the match point, he'd get this done in uh, under 50 minutes. Yeah, he'll be delighted though. There's, there's no negatives to take from this match as far as Federer is concerned. He'll be well aware of the fact that Davidenko's below par in terms of his overall performance, but he'll also argue, well, I didn't allow him to play well. Uh, it's been a quick match and that's a bonus when you're playing at sort of 10 o'clock local time it's getting a bit cold out there it's uh, easy to get injured uh, in these kind of temperatures uh, much cooler this evening than it was yesterday so lots and lots of positives as far as Federer is concerned time that match point in the previous game but still now with a chance to serve this out for a 5-2 second set it's you love the way he served uh, throughout I just think this will be over in a whisker Two points away. Oh, thirty fifteen. Those have been rare. Photograph the match point. <laughs> I still find that strange. <laughs> oh, it's a lovely back. That's a great shot. Good but get from Federer, but a wonderful shot there from Davidenko. It's a weird one, isn't it? Those personal photos. Shot. And there's so much footage of Federer winning the greatest tournaments in the world, and here he is, first round in Doha, winning comfortably, uh, and still wants a little memento of the occasion. It's nice. Pings that one away. Federer. Another match point this time on his own ball. Yeah, that'll do it. Federer. What a performance. Uh, it's just so long. It's just long one six here on day two. And that was the complete opposite. Just 54 minutes. The defending champion, well, in imperious touch. It's the former titleist here. Nikolai Davidenko sweeps him aside with absolute ease. Just four games dropped. Two and two. Roger Federer into the next round. You'll be pleased with that. Yeah, good stuff. 
you know, Davidenko had a little bit of a nightmare there. There's no question about that. So, even though he got a high percentage of first serves in initially, they weren't effective enough. And then once you start defending against Federer, there's only ever going to be one outcome. And uh, he wasn't able to be effective enough from the baseline as a result of the fact that he was pushed back initially uh, in the rally. And uh, we know he's one of the best returners in the business, but wasn't able to uh, get any effective purchase on enough returns this evening to put Federer under any pressure at all. We know also that uh, Federer is one of the best front runners in the business. So you give him an early break, as uh, Davidenko did, and, and you're always going to be up against it. And that, of course, proved to be the case throughout the course of that 54-minute uh, affair. Well, Roger, you're the defending champion. Nice for you to be back here in Doha. Yeah, love it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, very happy to be back uh, as defending champion to play the finals of last year in the first round. Was, it was tough. Uh, I thought it was not easy for Nikolai and myself, and uh, I thought it was a combination of me playing really well and maybe Nikolai not at his very best right away. So happy I was able to come through, and then I'm back in Doha, fit and healthy, and able to defend my title. It's really nice. It was your first match of the year. Did it even surprise yourself the way you played tonight? Well, I think so, yeah. I mean, I played aggressively, I served well, um, I thought I had good movement. And that's a bit of a surprise uh, early on in the season like that. But then again, every match new, I got to work on my game, you know, work on, you know, progressing in the draw. And I'm sure tomorrow's going to be a tough one. So I'm looking forward to that one. Well, it's a quick turnaround at the end of last year. But what did you do in your off season? Took some time off. Obviously, uh, I was uh, a bit tired myself. And uh, it was nice to spend some time with the family and friends. And, uh, and then obviously New Year and just getting ready for the new season. Practice really hard for about 20 days. And uh, here I am, ready to go and really motivated. Congratulations and well played. Thank you very much. Thoughts there of uh, Richie Federer. I thought for a second there, Guy, you were going to say the thoughts of Barry Cowan. <laughs> a bit of both, wasn't well, it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Good questions there.